Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 58. This is One Day Today. Thank you for joining us. Who am I? Who are you? You know, like, am I, I might have a name. I might have, a, you know, a, a gender. I might have a race. I may have a political affiliation. I may not. I may have a religion. I may not. And, you know, all these labels that I use for myself and we use for ourselves, you know, ultimately when I'm connecting with other people, I'm none of those things. You know, I, I am really so much more than my labels, my distinctions of how I separate myself from others. You know, what I've really discovered and what I really is honoring me, honored me in this space and humbled me is just who we are is so much more than our, our thoughts about ourselves and our, and our, the ways we divide ourselves. And, you know, we all have unique gifts and we have unique things we experience that allow us to really discover who we are. You know, underneath all these stories, underneath all these things that society tells us we have to have and, you know, distinguish, you know, who we are is so much like to consider who we are is much bigger than what we think. And that's, that's what it really just inspires me in this space because everybody has such a amazing, unique perspective with their unique gifts and their unique genius. And it's, and it's it's really a a pleasure and a it's just an, a real experience for me to learn and to hear other people's stories because it, it reminds me not only how interconnected we are how much us as humans lie laugh and cry the same but we, but our who we are and when we connect with each other and how we discover that about ourselves and about each other is is such a beautiful journey and it it just opens up possibility when we're actually willing to consider discovering who we are underneath all the, all the layers, all the masks that we wear. Let me now say hello and welcome our co-host, Matthew. Matthew, hey, how's it going, brother? Uh, a little bit rushed today. Uh, you know, decided last minute to try and find another spot to, to jump on. And I think I found the perfect one. It's it's a lot quieter than where I was the other day, so I'm I'm quite happy. And uh, they're actually open, which is even nicer. Um, yeah, I'm good. I that power and diversity that you're you're referring to, um, that gift that we all are to each other, and this gift we have of being here like to me it is it's a very unique opportunity to be here on this planet in one of these bodies um and it seems particularly powerful at this time of of major change and upheaval and learning and growing and i really appreciate everyone who's been a guest here and i'm very much looking forward to hearing what i guess have to say today because it has been that diversity like even even when someone comes on and there's this feeling of okay they're they're not quite passionate about what, what i'm passionate about or like they're like maybe i feel like they're like they're too caught up in an idea but like once they really open up and like that's it's something about what this space is that invites that vulnerable conversation. Like once they really open up and start really sharing, they I've been wowed every single time. And um, I'm just looking forward to seeing what happens next. <laughs> Absolutely, well, it's, everything is is everything's opening up with the, with the stories we share and the the more we connect and see ourselves in each other. And, you know, on that note, let's, let's, let's invite our first guest. We have with us today, we have Carrie Klimas. Hi, Carrie. Thank you for joining us. I'm so glad to have you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you guys inviting me to be here today. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, I am just so curious to hear your story, so I'm just going to let you jump in. But I'm going to, if you're all right with it, Carrie, I'm just going to say the stage is yours. 
Okay. Well, I'll, I guess I'll take it. So thank you for after me to stage. So um, saying hello to your community and the world out there. Thank you for being part of it and being part of this day on what we call October 22nd, 2020. So this moment has never happened ever before. So um, good afternoon, everybody, wherever you are. Good morning. I am Carrie Klimas. I am in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I'm actually born and raised in Fort Lauderdale, Broward County, Native Floridian. Um, my parents have some unique qualities about me that are probably not many people know or have in their life, but my parents actually still live in the same house I was born and raised in, in our city called Plantation. And they've been together for this January coming will be 60 years. They met in college together. And I actually attended the same college my parents met at. Um, no, I didn't find the love of my life in college, but I'm, I'll add that, that part to me as well. I'm single, never married, never engaged, never pregnant, um, things like that. So I say I got fun, freedom to have whatever I want to have more of. So not that there's anything wrong with any of that, but just in align the universe in align with me there. But anything's always possible in my world. I've got my cousins. I got a sister, brother-in-law, niece also very close here in South Florida as well, but I also got a soul family I call that I connect with, um, with my team, people around me, our community that I guess got, call my soul family, people I've met along the journey that have the same values and respect and appreciation for each other to see each other thrive, win and create the best of ourselves and always to live the highest and best version of ourselves. So a little bit about me, I started off in the corporate world. I got the, I got the good old education from getting a master, or no, I'm sorry, getting a bachelor's degree, the BS degree in college and got a human resources degree and thought I was going to be in the corporate world for a long periods of time. I did. I jumped around for several different um, big, large corporations. I'm trying to get myself up the ladder. I think that's most people are trying to do, but kind of guess you could say I was very bored, um, very creative, very disciplined of attention, get things done. But then I wasn't really fulfilled and bored. I keep a good calendar, but actually the AA position is what I took on first as administrative assistant. Then I jumped into being a, more an executive assistant where I found to be only having to manage one person's calendar and schedules and their situations and making more money. So that's what I did for the end of my corporate years, which I was involved in corporate, the corporate world for about 18 years total. I have now been out of the corporate world since 2009. In 2004, I actually had four jobs. I had a full-time job part-time job at the Olive Garden, also two direct sales marketing companies, um, scrapbooking and candles. And then in 2009, I had actually told the universe that I actually wanted to be on my own. And next thing you know, the universe aligned with me and I got to be on my own on December 7th of 09. And at that time, I only had my candle business and I went out to the networking world with this guy at a networking event three weeks after letting getting let go. And he told me to brand myself. I said, I don't know what that means, but always appreciating myself for always being an open person, open, willing to know what people are sharing and sat down with him in December 31st of 2009. And actually, that's when I met him, but I'll say, I guess a month or so later. And the first company I created because of his brilliant genius idea, just meeting him for lunch. My first business was called Gift Problem Solver. And I remember that day that I was actually downstairs in my living room and he's upstairs in my computer. And I said, oh, my God, I'm a GPS. People knew me as a GPS lady. So I had my candle business and earned a free trip. I had all my attention on focus on that. But actually, I went out networking and ran into a woman selling these interchangeable purses called a Michi bag. And I added that on. Then I sold candles. And I held a whole showroom of inventory in my house, organized. And my clients would come to my cash and carry events. See, my first name is Carrie. And... Um, yeah, got a lot of understanding about, went to conferences, seminars, and workshops when I got involved in the direct sales industry. Took a lot of wonderful notes, read a lot of books, but I wasn't applying what I was reading. One word I did take away from an audio book I did hear was the word consider. So I do use the word consider every most often as I can. It was one thing I took away from one of the conferences I heard about, but Life in 2011 still wasn't as ideal, still wasn't fulfilled. I didn't communicate as well as I like to communicate. Um, I played invisible, didn't know how to speak up, didn't know how to you know, stand my ground, um, allowed myself to get caught into somebody else's world and didn't value, respect myself enough. So in 2011, having a showroom of inventory in my house, 
Um, if I'm going out to networking, I did a lot of networking, pretty much was everywhere. And usually, the, as I said, the universe always brings exactly who we need to meet. And I met my coach trainer from our company, Self Discovery Life Mastery. She came to my house, sat on my couch, and said, Carrie, do you want to continue living with all this inventory in your house? I said, no, but I don't know what to do next. I'm kind of stuck. I'm not knowing how to take that next step and what that looks like. So she offered me an opportunity and I said, all right, I'm open. And she says, what if I could show you a very simple way to quiet your mind, discipline your attention, and being able to focus your attention on creating a more of a business that aligns with your skills and abilities. And also in the meantime, you'll be learning how to let go of things, people, less worry, less stress, letting, letting go of this product that no longer serves you. And now you can spend your time, you know, aligning yourself with more of what you want. Hmm. So she leaves my house. I'm going to be doing the same thing over and over again. Insanity, right? Hamster wheel. So I couldn't afford to keep doing the same thing over and over again. But what she had to offer sounded a lot more than what I had right now. I was more willing to invest in myself because that vision looked really wonderful insightful more of what i wanted so i decided to allow my attention to focus my attention more toward the dream and imagine what could happen rather than being sitting at home and doing the same thing over and over again in the same business so i said nope so i invested two years with my coach i tended you know having weekly coaches with meetings with her um, learning more about myself and also attended our our experiential workshops so everything we learn is uh, like working at the gym got to practice not concepts, not ideas, but are simple and multiple exercises to learn how to quiet our mind. Our little thinking tower up here has a lot to say. And lots of times it limits us from being the person we want to be. When we were born, we were born present. These little kids, if you know of little kids, they get up and do whatever. There's no fears, no, no filters. There's no judgments, no circumstances. They just do whatever they want. Or bringing people back to that natural way of being childlike, being explorer, being curious, and being open. So when we're present, we're open to all possibilities. Whatever's in front of us is exactly right in front of us. But if we keep continuing living in our head, we're very limited to what we only know. So we train people to learn how to get out of their head, be more focused, more open, and seeing things they never thought before. Or they thought about, but they didn't trust themselves enough to go for it. So that's why I'm a life coach. and supporting people and learning to train them and support them and guide them into creating their ideal vision for their entire life, how they want to feel more fulfilled, successful, brilliant, joyful, happy, whatever it is you like to feel more of, purposeful, passionate, you can have it. It's all about the feeling and how you feel about yourself and connect to the feeling. But you can only do that from being present. You can't feel if you're in your head. And your head is actually stops us from feeling, connecting to what feels right for us. Just like we bought our car or our clothes, everything we, things we eat, we can do it because we feel like we're going to feel good about it. We enjoy it. And also creating, you know, people creating out of their own uh, mission statement. You know, what kind of leader do you want to be? Who do you admire out in the real world that you look up to and also want to take on the qualities of other leaders that you admire? People that communicate well, have a presence, express themselves, demand the best for themselves and others. And successful people, as we know, have coaches. So another way I can look at it is almost like playing, playing a game. So if you've ever been involved in sports before, there's a coach, there's a team, and the ideal alignment is to win the game. The ball has to get into the net, into the goal. But most of us don't know how to live a game called life and to stay focused on the ideal outcome. Because all there is really is it's the win, 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 and become aware of ourselves when we act as if we're losers or play victims and to get onto the winning attitude and to create the ideals of what we want. So also support people in creating goals and action steps, looking at how they feel and getting honest and real about how they feel about their loved ones, car, home, office, career, self-mastery, intimate relationships. So if we can identify how we feel about these areas and takes courage to get honest with ourselves and how we feel about it. Might not be as ideal as we like, but Let's trust that we want to get to, to being at a four, to, you know, fours and fives and fives being excellent. But sometimes we're stuck in our heads or we are only in our heads and we don't know what that next step looks like. So not knowing where to go instead of hoping, praying some things might change in life. 
let's trust that and imagine that our world is exactly waiting for us. We're just always been looking for somebody that can guide us there. And you can't get that through a book. A book has information. That's why people out there, lots of information, but they're not successful. They're not getting what they want because they're not knowing and they're not spending their time with people that can guide them and become a master. So get out there and look for a master who's walked the steps before you, whether, I mean, I have an interior decorator, you know, designer, she's a master. I like being organized, but she takes it to the next step that I cannot see. That's why I hire her. She's $100 an hour, but she's worth it because my house feels, you know, a tremendously well. And I love being in my house and it makes it feel like I have a new house every single time she comes over. So I invest in things that stretch me to enjoy myself and my life and adding value to myself. So I've added value to my property, got new windows, hurricane doors. And I've been told that my house is much more updated than most people, especially from a, who did I hear that from? Um, a termite, a termite investigator, you know. He said, you carry one of the nicest houses in this neighborhood because I take care of it. I value my property. I value myself. I value my car, my friends, my relationships. I value all that. So I invest in myself to value and respect myself more and also add value to my friends and clients and their lives because I'm important. But I also want to find out what is holding me back from being, because we're human beings, to be the best person I can be, the best leader I can be. Always willing to look underneath myself and value myself under my teeth, my hood. And that's what's hurting people. They're not looking at what them looking underneath themselves and what's important to them. So I say, find a master reaching out to me. If you heard anything you liked, please feel free to reach out. Love to connect with you. My information's on the screen. Um, love to support people. I also offer a complimentary introduction, which gives you a test drive of our winning strategy, learning a very simple, powerful exercise on how to quiet the mind. Lots of great value. And if I find out it's valuable for you, then take the next best step. And all it is is an opportunity to take a test drive. All about learning about you, what's important to you, and seeing what I have to offer along with my time and my attention is exactly what's going to guide you to where you want to go. So I think my time is about to run up, run, you know, run out. So I certainly do appreciate those who did decide to participate in listening to this today. And thank you, Matt and Abram, to allow me this time to share my story with the world. Thank you so much, Carrie, for, for sharing your story. Um, it's, uh, I think it's amazing that you have taken your growth and sharing, that's like you're sharing this gift of growth and transformation to others, you know, and I, I, and I'm, I just acknowledge you for the work that you do. And I'm, I'm curious, like, what was it like, if you could paint the picture, like, what was it like before you experience your own power before you had the courage to consider that word there's that word that you use like before you had the, the like the power to consider and discover your true power like how did you know how did that like what was it like before and what you know what opened up the door was there like a moment or was there like a a series of events or was there just like a aha moment or or how, what was well, it I mean, like the day that my trainer you know sat on my couch I mean, that was the day I said yes to my highest and best. That was the day that I committed to it because I knew, you know, about personal development. But again, my life still wasn't fulfilled. I mean, I, like I said, I'm either she's going to leave my house and I'm going to still have the same thing over and over again. And I could not afford to keep doing that. But I was willing to take that investment and invest in myself because that vision sounded much more, much more, you know, much more um, engaging you know, it's like delicious. I wanted that. Like, wow, you're serving me up this platter, this dream vacation, this dream life that you're saying I could actually have. It's actually true. Really? And you can help me get that? It's like a server. A server can, you know, give you a delicious meal, but they're here to define and support you what it is you're looking for. If they can give you that, then you tip them really well because they asked you great questions and served you up exactly what you wanted and go out the door fulfilled and happy. And then you recommend the place. You might go see that server again, too. They listen to your wants and needs and help to find them. Right. Yeah. That's a uh, uh, that's a that's a great analogy. You know, we want to when we have some an experience, we want to share that experience. We want to recommend that restaurant to everybody. <laughs> um, and even a server, if you really like the server mm -hmm. enough, I mean, that's even another bonus. I mean, people go back to the same server again because they really took care of them, or even the hairdresser or my nail tech. I still refer them because of how they treated me. I enjoy the conversation. If I refer them, I got little decorations on my toes as a bonus. I mean, if it's a good flow, 
we're both supporting and respecting each other's skills and you know and business mm. you know can keep working with them if they're not then find somebody else that's willing to have that two-way win-win i mean mm. i've left a hair because of that i left the nail tech because of that yeah and found that people that aligned with me they're willing to share yeah and get from each other absolutely uh, so I, well, one question that's kind of coming right now, is, and this is kind of, there's kind of a big, and a, there's like a micro and a macro. Uh, this is kind of what's coming to me. Um, you know, just you speaking on about our minds and, and our, 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 you know, speaking for myself, the very loud mind, a very active mind. And I feel like that's the state, that's the case for, I don't, I don't want to speak to everybody, but I think most of society probably operates mostly out of their mind and lets their mind run the show and you know most of my life that was the case and it's still something you know it's, it's a dance to discover you know how to manage and to you know whether some people do meditation some people do you know play play chess like we have different ways and tools to either quiet our mind or to navigate the natural thought process that that occur and i guess my question is well for the big picture is like, how does society, how does civilization, you know, when so many of us are operating from my, from our minds, how do we build awareness towards that? Like, like, because I feel like a lot of people don't, including most of me for most of my life, as I didn't think of it as that my mind, like I couldn't, there was no separation. Like I thought my thoughts were me. And like, how do, how do, when, much of society has not distinguished that for themselves. How did you discover that for yourself? But also how do we share that opportunity for others to discover that for themselves? Well, first and foremost, those who are listening are already in great hands. <laughs> they already got my contact information, they can reach out. So if they're hearing it, it's exactly what they need to hear right now. Next thing I gotta do is actually take action and reach out so they can. So. Yeah, whoever thought that this thing could actually quiet itself down. We have thoughts, we're not our thoughts. I have a body, I'm not my body. I'm not my, my, I'm not my sensations, I'm not my emotions. I just happen to have them. But we don't know that there is separation on that, but I knew I was meant for something bigger and better. I just didn't know what that was. But again, the universe, you know, lined me. I mean, I'm seven minutes away from our facility and, you know, I'm grateful for the, pe the people who did come around me and. You know, I invest in that because by just attending the workshop and everything just made sense. I mean, you know, really, I mean, because I showed Abram what our, look, our life looks like. We have, you know, empowerment and limitation. I mean, if you think of a baby, I mean, the baby can get up and down and doesn't have, you know, the child, young child doesn't have any limitations yet. But as we get, go get older, we have so many people's opinions and judgments. We don't trust ourselves anymore. All of a sudden, all these filters are, you know, coming in. So we're not listening to our inner selves, our true self, our intuition. We don't know how to listen to it and trust it. So when we're creative, when we're in the flow, when we're driving, playing a sport, whatever we enjoy doing, we're present. But we're not able to stay in that present moment all the time. And but it is take does take our an exercise that we train people in to be more connected to your senses. But as a practice, just like working out, just like drinking water. I mean, if you want to maintain a good physique. You gotta be consistent. I'm not gonna stop drinking water, but if you don't ever drink water, you do know it's valuable. You gotta at least set up yourself and drink one bottle of water a day, then two bottles. But who's maintaining that for you? Who's gonna make that? You know, who's gonna make that important? You do. But most of us are so busy and automatic, we're not deliberate in disciplining ourselves to make ourselves aware and checking off every day. Did I drink one bottle? Did I not? And don't beat yourself up over it, but at least recognize you for the for the accomplishments. Wow, we like to beat ourselves up too much rather than this is not that this is the enemy. Being present is not the enemy. <laughs> your soul, your intuition is your, know, your friend. Me, myself, and I get along very well. Laugh more at yourself. There's Lao I'm pretty sure it was Lao Tzu who said, uh, my friend is the one who cuts my head off. My enemy is the one who tries to put it back on. I don't know that, who that is. Like, yeah. I think that was Lao Tzu, I'm pretty sure, but um it goes to that heart of what you were just talking about that like you know this isn't real like what's going on up here is just what's going on up here and it's all made up based on everything that it absorbed or downloaded as we were growing up like it's just it's just a 
a program basically that's just going on repeat for automatic for most people. Um, I had I laughed when uh, you were talking about your friend and she like as, as you were as you were describing what she was describing to you. Uh, like, I was like, oh man, she is really selling meditation. That's awesome. Like, I, 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 I I'm gonna say meditation right now. I'm just present. I'm here now. I do not know what I'm gonna say next. I trust myself what I'm going to say. You can't buy trust. And people say they can't trust, we gotta trust yourself. I trust myself, I value myself, I respect myself, I give myself what I want. I demand that best for myself. I'm willing to spend that money to make myself the best version of me. You spend the money on your car, you spend your money on buying a new phone, but you can't ever get that money back ever again. The money that you've spent on that car and your phone will never come back. But yourself, I mean, I, heard, I read something or somebody told me that Warren Buffett said, gotta believe Warren Buffett, right? So if you actually invest in your communication skills, verbal and nonverbal, 50% of your value already goes up. So how much are you willing to spend to have better communication skills if you're gonna get more value coming back to yourself? You are your best, best investment. And reading about it's not gonna change it. You gotta be it and act on it. Of course, the question is, is that what, you, is that what your higher self, your intuition is actually asking for? Is that part of what you came here to be? And if it is, great, yeah, go for it. But if it's not, follow that instead. Um, there's another word that keeps coming as you're describing, you know, the value of love. It's, it, it's love. Like, what, like, to me, what you're describing is, is love. You love your home. You love your car. You love yourself. And it shows. It very much shows. <laughs> Thank you. I like being me. I love being me. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll say it right because it's funny you say that because in the words evolution and revolution, love is spelled backwards. Love is in evolution and revolution and all there is is love, but until one person, the best relationship is with yourself. So if you can understand yourself, I mean, would I date me? Of course I would. I like me. But, you know, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you got to have a best relationship with yourself and know yourself and what you want. And then trust yourself that you're aligning with people that respect your skills and abilities, too. If they don't, on for the next ones that do. Align with those. Be the brighter light and shine up there and let others see you and want to be in your world. If they don't respect that, then that's okay. They just Actually, want to that be does bring up a question. Um, did you ever go through loneliness? Like, did you ever just distinguish what loneliness is for you and can you if so could you talk about that for a little while well i mean in the word loneliness it's just all we're all one and alone i mean i'm alone in this world we came in the world alone i go out the world alone but because i'm okay being with myself i don't consider it loneliness i can entertain myself and i can have fun no matter you can be alone even in a crowd so but you know being being comfortable being by yourself i'm comfortable being by myself I enjoy being by myself. I like being with people and sometimes people can be too much and I need to go home and be alone with myself. <laughs> but I mean, loneliness would be how the person defines it. I don't really have any judgment on loneliness, but I mean, I don't it's think something it's- something you, you experienced before coming to this place where you are now, coming to the present? Well, I mean, I don't feel like I, I mean, there's always with people in my life, but again, I was always, I guess, to, but if I didn't ask for that help, the universe, again, my mar, my trainer, Marcy, came to my house, and maybe I kind of was alone, but I didn't I think I had loneliness, but she came and showed me support and guidance of something that would, uh, you know, somebody who had my back, and you know, somebody who had more interest in me than most people around me did. I just knew, if I didn't go through all this work, there's like six workshops, and if I knew the last workshop's called boot camp, and then you have the opportunity to be part of the community. And I said to myself, if I don't stay committed to this work, I'll go out to that world out there. They still won't get me. I don't know who's going to talk to me. Who am I going to have a nice soul, nice conversation with? Not the surface stuff. So my family, we talk surface. I don't want to talk surface. I can talk politics. I can talk about anything. But most people, the soul is where we have those kind of great connections with people. And I think a lot of people want to have those deeper connections and find people they can be themselves around. You know, and that's all we want to be able to explore and share things that nothing wrong with anything, but I'm willing to own my foolishness and my idiotic self, but I'm okay with, because I'm also brilliant, but I forgive myself for where I've been and allow myself to be better now. And I have to hold on to that. 
whatever yeah. it is, it's okay. I'm exactly where I need to be and everything is okay and everything always works out. Yes, exactly. It always works out. <laughs> but that's a belief. I got to have that belief. And if I believe it to the core, then it's going to be true because I believe it. I thought the only thing is a belief. Beliefs create a reality. Whatever you choose to believe is up to you. I I really admire your, I don't even know what to call it. It's like you have such a, it's like you can't be pulled down and it's like and it's and it's and it shows and it's like and it's it shows that you treat that that you treat that to your that yourself that way but also your environment and i think that's a that's a beautiful that's a beautiful force to to be in the world because a lot of the time we want to run to a victim the world's happening to me and woe is me and oh this is hard this is terrible and it's like you you are like that doesn't even compute to, for you. It's just like it's just like, well, okay, well, this is what this is what it, everything is right where it needs to be, and I think that's beautiful. And I just I admire your your just passion and your commitment for holding the space for courage, for compassion, for for power. You know, it's just like well, so we're as humans, including myself, we're so willing to give away our power based on outside circumstances. And I just see you so grounded in that just, you're just so grounded and it's like and it's it's contagious so i i just really appreciate your your energy and your <laughs> and, and just your passion it's it's really it's really nice to be to, to experience so thank you so much for sharing with us Gary. we're gonna yeah, we're i will gonna, say that yeah i was just gonna ahead. say that yeah, i consider it called an optimistic winning attitude because if i have an optimistic winning attitude my results are pretty going to be pretty darn good so i'll take that well, we'll I'll take keep, it too. I'll keep it. I'm always willing to give it up, and everybody else can want to have it. I'll help you. Get <laughs> oh, you I one. really love it. Thank you so much, Carrie, for sharing. We're going to check back with you in just a little bit. We're going to welcome our second guest. But thank you so much for sharing your story and your your amazing attitude and <laughs> all that insight. Thank you. And for those tuning in, thank you for being with us. I want to take this moment to invite you to share your gift, your genius. This is a space for you. And it's really like for you to just share what have you been through? What have you experienced? What have you overcome that has allowed you to experience, like truly experience who you are, not who you think you are, not who you thought, think you might be or think you could be or should be. It's like, who are you underneath all the story? Like we want you to share what's on the other side of what you've faced in your life because there's something beautiful in who you are and what you have to share. And there's something unique that you have that enrich us, enriches all of us. And that's, that's why we're here. We want to share you. We want to share the gift that you are. And that's our one day mission is bringing you and me and communities together in joyous celebration, unifying humanity in our diversity to create a better world for us all. So now I would like to invite our second guest. We have Doug Lawrence with us. Doug, welcome. Thank you so much um, to both of you for this opportunity to share my story with you and with your listening audience. And thank you to everybody for joining us today for this wonderful opportunity to gain some personal insight into a couple practitioners who are trying to change the world and make it a better place. So let me first share a little bit about myself. So I'm a farm boy. I grew up in uh, Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada, or actually on a small farm uh, north of Regina. Um, I then uh, joined the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and um, spent almost 25 years in the Royal Canadian Mounted Police as a law enforcement officer on the street for, I think it was about 15 years and then 10 years in an administrative position. And then from there, I, I went on, I'm kind of one of these multiple career type people. From there, I went on to uh, do some consulting and, and in some uh, further leadership positions as well. And one thing that, that kind of stood out for me over the course of all of that was that I seem to have a gift. And, and the gift that I had was something that I, I didn't have a name that I could wrap it up. There, there was no wrapping paper I could put around it and, and be able to say, yes, that's what it is. 
But what it was, as I found out later, was that it was actually the capability or the, the gift of mentoring. So being able to work with individuals on a personal and professional level to help them to help them grow and also to for self growth on my own part from a personal and professional basis. And I was while I was still working in, uh, I believe it was in one of the uh, government positions where I was in a leadership role, I was actually job coaching university students and we'd be, get successful in getting them placed in, a, in an organization. And, you know, two to three months down the road, they would call me up and say, gee, Doug, this happened in the workplace today, and I have no idea whatsoever on how to deal with it. And it was at that stage that I started to use my mentoring skills and started to ask them a bunch of questions to guide them to the various paths that they could take to solve <clears throat> that they could take to solve that particular question. And it was after a period of time that a few of them said, you know, Doug, this is, you have a gift. You need to do this full time. Uh, we can't afford to pay you, but I'm sure somebody could. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I ended up, I started, I did some market research and I found out that there was definitely a market niche and I could take the gift that I had been given and I could actually put that into, into a, a business practice of, of mentoring. And so in the fall of 2009, I launched my own company, a company called Talent C. Um, and it was pri primarily focused at that particular stage on mentoring and mentor certification. But the certification was being done primarily from a knowledge base rather than a competence base. And that's important for us to hang on to that as I go through sort of the, the, the story here. Um, what we ended up doing was we launched the certification, I believe it was in 2010, and it became an international certification for mentoring. And like I said, it, it, was, um, it, it was one that was focused on knowledge base and I saw at that particular time that there were some gaps there and that we needed to take a look at doing something a little bit different. But the market wasn't quite ready because mentoring, being certified as a mentor was just not something that a lot of people um, seem to buy into. So it was in 2017 that I ended up breaking away from the certification body that I was working with and I moved to a, a new business partner who could provide mentor certification, um, mentor certification from a competence perspective. So assessing an individual's uh, capabilities or qualities to become an effective mentor um, based on a series of competencies. And I believe there's what we developed was about 60. 68 or 69 competency statements for the various levels. So you're kind of, you're probably wondering, okay, so where is this going to lead? And what I wanna share with you now is from the aspect of the research that I've done and where we're actually heading with this. So I've done extensive re research on mental health, mental well being post-traumatic stress and operational uh, stress injuries. And so, and my reason for taking a look at, at all of those uh, different modalities from a mental health perspective is that I've, I'm very passionate about, and I share quite often the concept or the idea that mentoring has a place as part of the support structure for mental health, mental well-being, post-traumatic stress, and OSI or operational stress injury. So it, it's really important, you know, that that we move forward with that. L let me tell you why. So a lot of organizations today do not have a mental health, mental well-being program in place. And if they do, they don't have that really good support structure. And this is where that that mentor who is has some level of training who who could actually have a certification um, as it relates to mental health 
um, this is a great place for that individual to be plugged in. So what I found in doing my research was a couple things. Number one was that I actually, as a law enforcement officer, actually had experienced post-traumatic stress, that I also came very, very close to losing my family because I turned to, to alcohol as a crutch uh, for me to be able to deal with the post-traumatic stress. I was very fortunate that I had um, some, my support structure, my, my wife and my two children were the resilience factors that I needed in order to be able to navigate through that. And family is important to me. Uh, I'm married with uh, two children and two grandchildren and family means is the world to me. So being able to have tackled and accomplished moving past that post-traumatic stress or certainly having the coping mechanisms to be able to deal with it was really important to me. And even, you know, even like understanding how mentoring can help me in a leadership function, I didn't realize how important it was for me to have those coping skills to be able to, to, to deal with post-traumatic stress. Um, one of the things that I, I, you know, we keep talking about, we've so far today, we've been talking about gift and about, you know, each of us having a gift. And I'm going to suggest to you, you folks that are listening in today that if you do have a gift, it's actually your calling. It's what you've been put on this earth to do. And, you know, you, you listen to, to Carrie tell her story and she has her calling. And she's obviously very, very good at what she does because you can sense or feel her genuineness, her willingness, her openness, and her actual, her actual self-caring as well. And it's really important that we all understand that and we all embrace that. So that's, that's uh, one thing I wanted to share. And what's also interesting, I don't share this very often, but I was thinking, gosh, what's my calling? What am I going to do? People say, well, you know, I wrote a book called The Gift of Mentoring. So yeah, that's great. Um, and it, it, it's the, the whole idea around how do I know for sure this whole thing that people talk about calling? And so I actually, I, uh, I decided to try something. And <clears throat> I ended up, I had a session with a hypnotherapist who actually helped me uh, open up. And I was able to determine that Yes, mentoring is my calling. Actually, I in past lives, I was actually a healer that would work with individuals. And I won't get into the whole long story around that, but it's actually quite interesting, the experience that I had uh, as far as being able to sort of rip the covers off and take a look at it from the aspect of, of what is your calling and why is it and how do you have or yeah, basically, how do you have the knowledge that you have today to be able to share with others and help them be the best they can be to help the world be a better place? How how can you do all of that and, and be able to do it with, you know, genuineness and sincerity? So that was a, a good investment of time on my part to be able to do that. And the individual that I worked with has has her gift and her gift is hypnotherapy. And she's very, very good at what she does and she, she's very good about what it is that she does. So let me share, I wanna share a story that goes way back to when I was just a youngster. And it's a story of my grandfather. Now, without kind of jumping ahead here, I'm just, I'll paint the picture first. So. I was asked one time, I was doing a podcast, and one of the questions I was asked, when you think back over your entire life, what is one memory that seems to stand out uh, for you? And for me, it was, you have to bear with me if, if I kind of lose a little bit here. Uh, this, is, um, this is a tough one for me, but is the aspect of, the memory that I have is sitting on my grandfather's knee 
when I was about three, three years of age, and him letting me steer the big Pontiac car that we had or that he had, and my grandmother sitting right beside, giving him the gears because she shouldn't be letting me, I'm only three years old, shouldn't be letting me drive the car. And of course, his response was, you know, don't worry about it. I'm, I got my hands on the wheel as well. And, you know, why not let him experience that? That's an experience, you know, that everybody needs to have. And what was important for me to realize was that I'm going to spend every waking moment that I possibly can with my grandchildren because my grandfather um, suffered from mental health and, and actually took his own life. And it was a closely guarded secret for such a long period of time that I never really found out until just before my own parents passed away. And it was at that time point that they said, this, you know, your grandfather uh, had some mental health issues and actually took his, his own life. And I could hear I could hear grandpa say, What you're doing, my son, is something that the world can benefit from. And I ask you, I plead you, I encourage you to continue on your journey to be helping others who were suffering and are trying to heal like what I was. And it was really important for me to do that. And the other part that was really important was that was a missed opportunity for a great relationship. And what I found when I reflected over the course of my life while I was doing my research on mental health and mentoring was that I didn't have that many, um, I didn't have that many relationships to speak of. And so I have, through mentoring now, I have been able to close that gap to, to, be, able to, um, to be able to develop those relationships. And it's now important to me. And I do lots of mentoring. I'm mentoring people at all walks of life and internationally with uh, the American Corporate Partners in the United States and with uh, Sir Richard Branson's Entrepreneur Program in the Caribbean. So I'm... I'm I'm being able to share that gift with people all over the world. And that's really, truly important to me. So I encourage each and every one of you, if you have not found a mentor yet, that you reach out. My contact information will be made available to you um, on the site here. And please feel free to shoot me an email and, and we can set up a time to chat and everything else. Um, I also want to encourage you to you know, practice reflection. So reflecting on things that went well, things that don't go well, and what we're going to do differently. Reflection is really an important piece for all of us as we continue to grow, you know, mind, body, and spirit. So especially on a spiritual basis. So it's really important. And I think I've got just a minute or so left. And so this is probably a great place for, for me to segue out and uh, turn it back over to, to you folks. Thank you so much, Doug, for, for sharing your story. And it was really powerful what you're sharing about your grandfather and, you know, and just in the work that you do, you know, just sharing the gift, you know, just, just, you know, from your experiences of your life, but just knowing what your grandfather went through and, and just sharing, caring for people. And, you know, we, and, I, and I guess so, well, so many things that you said really stuck out. But I, one of the things you're talking about was calling, people's calling. Like how, like what do you say to somebody who says, I don't know what my calling is? Or like what, or what did you, what, what was your experience when you, when you're mo you were your most lost? You know, and I mean, in my own experience, you know, when you're the most lost is when you have the most potential to find, like you can't really find yourself until you're lost. But when you're lost, it doesn't feel that way. So like, what do you say to somebody who's, who's seeking that calling for themselves? What I typically like to be able to do is we have a conversation about their personal growth first. So, you know, mentoring is typically, 
they focus on the, the the idea behind it is to focus on career development and personal growth and people have a tendency to spend more time on the professional development on the career development piece i focus on the personal growth side of things so what i typically say to people is when you wake up in the morning what's the first thing you think of what excites you when you wake up in the morning so you know when you what's the first thing you think of and is that the thing that excites and energizes you for the rest of the day and if it does then it might very well be what you're calling is so i i, I get them to it's a self exploration because for me to find my calling i didn't really real i i shouldn't say that i i did realize that there was something there i just didn't know and it was actually the, the you know the time i spent with the the hypnotherapist that actually that sealed the deal there for me that confirmed everything because it was at the you know it was basically that um you know this is your call your you are here on this earth to be a healer to help others be the best that they can be Yeah, that uh, that experience right there really touched me, and, and that and, and the story with your grandfather, um, particularly like that you're so open and willing to talk about past lives and things like that in a context where often that is ostracized and shamed and, and looked down upon, um, and you know, just real quick on that, like, who knows if it's really past lives or not, right? Like, it, it, to me, it doesn't even matter if it's past yeah. lives or not. Like, it's yeah. the words point to an experience. The words are not the experience. And, um, you know, I've I, I've shared memories from what seemed like past lives. So, like, I really appreciate just your openness around that and just just your, uh, what's the word, just... Um, just how, uh, I, I can't even think of the word right now. It's, uh, I'm blanking out, but... With your grandfather, um, what stood out immediately about that experience was you had two opposing ways of being that were demonstrated at a very early age. You had your grandfather encouraging, trusting, openness, go for it, it's okay if you get hurt. And your grandmother, don't do this because it's scary. You might get hurt. You might hurt others. And I just wonder, like, did you, like, I don't imagine you were aware of that at the time, but was there, like, was there a point where that came back around and you realized that depth and how did it affect you in that moment? It, it did. I obviously at three years of age, I, I, I probably, well, I, I know that. I know that I didn't understand the magnitude or the impact that that experience was going to have. Um, and it really didn't, it really, I, I wasn't able to actually talk about it or deal with it until I actually started to do the research on mental health, mental well-being, and then how it, how it all tied to, to mentoring. It wasn't until I started to do that reflection that I was able to go, oh my gosh. And, and you know, out of all my childhood memories, out of every single one that I've had over the course of my 60 plus years, that's the one single memory that is as vivid as though it happened yesterday. And it, it's one that, it was the only one that actually jumped out and, you know, said, listen, I have a story to tell over here. You need, you need to, you know you need to listen and so for me uh, yeah there there it, it was such that i think that that experience there was something hidden there had to be something hidden a message of some magnitude that was hidden for that to stay with me all those years and i shared you know i shared that with my parents before they passed and you know they 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 just went, you know, what are you talking about? You're talking nonsense. Go away, sort of, so to speak. But 
it's the one memory that has stayed with me all my life that has had the impact that it has actually had to be actually told by your grandfather when you're three years old, or that it was actually after that, after he had passed, that the message, I, I got the message while I was still a young person that this is the path you need to take. And I, you know, at that time, being a youngster, I was more concerned about, you know, going through school and playing sports and helping on the farm and all that sort of stuff. So, but it, it was, it was a powerful message I received then, and it's one that keeps getting continually reinforced even now where, you know, Grandpa speaks to me and says, this, this is what you need to be able to do. I love that. I haven't met many people who have had that visceral of an experience with, um, beyond, with the other worlds. And um, like just you, like just you sharing about it now, I can feel how impactful that is just from your energy because, like, I'm tearing up just hearing you talk about it. You know, like it's. it's yeah. I don't know if it's possible to actually convey with words the power of that experience. Yeah. Uh, you know, I I think. To the full extent, I agree with you. I don't think that you actually need to experience it. And I mean, there's nothing that says that you and I can't have a conversation and we can end up exploring a childhood memory of yours that will give you, once you understand it, that will actually give you that same sort of sense or feeling. It, it, it's possible. Um, and part of that is for you to make sure, for me to make sure that you're open and willing to exp explore those opportunities uh, versus, you know, I, like I'm sure we probably have a lot of people that are kind of shaking their head going, you know, like, what's this guy, what's this crazy guy from Canada talking about here? You know, but um, it happened. It happened to me. I know what took place and and I know what it's done to me as a person. And it, that very same feeling, that very, yeah, that very same, uh, yeah, I, I'm stuck for words again, but the very same feeling can be shared by all our listeners today. So, you know, it's just be willing to take that step, be willing to reach out to, to somebody that's going to guide you, reach out to that, you know, that mentor that's going to be able to, help you go down that path. And you may find that maybe the answer to some of the, the pain and suffering that you're dealing with today is us exploring that. Absolutely. I, I think that's really powerful. I'm going to go ahead and bring uh, Carrie back into the mix with us here. Welcome back, Carrie. Thank just, you. So, well, just from what you were saying, you know, like it's like the power of the experiences, but what you're, what you're saying with like a mentor, like, it's like it's in our. I love to hear your both your thoughts, but it's like it's our our willingness to be vulnerable, like to ourselves, but also with others, and to actually know that we're blocked, or know that you know, know that we we want to break out of our own, of our own devices, and and like you know, just be free, and to, you know, and it's like it, it takes courage that not only to ask for help but it's like to be vulnerable and to be authentic and that is to be tell the truth to ourselves about what we've really what life's really been like for us and i just i always want to give you both an opportunity to to, to interact just based on what was what, what has been shared well i just trust everybody does want to be them true their true self in my world you know as we learn about ourselves we'll learn how to be able to experience our past i mean i was with Abram yesterday and I was over, I had a two day workshop this past weekend and I was open to learning something new about myself to add value to my life and others. I attended the same name workshop before, but there were different participants and I was a different version of me, but what am I gonna take away from what I'm going to hear and experience? And so I was aware that um, a couple of years ago, I created a, a flyer or a nice pretty sign that said 10 things I appreciate about you. Uh, one for my mom, my sister, 
my my dad, my brother-in-law, my niece. Now my mom and dad took it and framed it in the dining room. I don't know what my sister, my brother-in-law or niece did, but that felt very touching that my parents actually valued what I gave them and decided to hang it. So I realized over the weekend that when I speak about my sister, it's not coming from appreciation. It's coming from the story I keep holding on to. And I'm like, mm, why am I doing that? Because I talk about my parents and what I appreciate about them. So thankfully for me, I took a picture of the flyer I made and printed it. So I'm keeping my attention on that and embedding all the marvelous things I do appreciate about my sister and letting go of what I think the things that are negative that doesn't serve any of us. And this Sunday, I'm actually going to be spending time with my niece, my cousins as they're in town. And lucky for me, I'm going to have a new opportunity to go with a new perspective when I see her. So trusting the relationship will change because of my awareness and adding value to our lives and not holding on to an idiotic story that I created that no longer serves either of us. But that awareness came from me, nobody else. <laughs> yeah, and I think that it, that it's awareness and it's actually even reflection. So, because I what I heard you going through was, you know, even from a relationship perspective is, this is what went well, this didn't go well, and this is what I'm going to do differently. And you've already got that sort of that strategy or that plan in place. And I hate to use those words when I talk about relationships, but, um, you know, you've already got that already figured out and how you're going to use that to make it a memorable moment. Well, I decided I'm, I trust myself. I mean, I got the information. Now I'm going to take, I got the attitude, attitude equals behaviors, equals actions, equals results. So I've got the right attitude. I'm going to have the right behavior and I'm going to do the, I'm taking the right action steps to get the results. I mean, but most people don't know how to set themselves up to be that deliberate and highly affected to get the job done. So I had an awareness, I put an action, and I'm feeling good about how, what I'll be creating. So thank you, self, <laughs> <laughs> for being open and hearing something that made me have an awareness. I'm like, why, why am I not doing that to her? I'm like, this is crazy, but I'm forgiving myself for who I was and allowing that old version to dissipate and create a new one, writing a new book, new chapter. And making a new one turn out new book or chapter a new book to arrive <laughs> as well and now it sounds like you have the opportunity to really meet your sister well that's the universe exactly exactly what i needed right i needed to hear that now put into play and the opportunity because my cousins were rock is you're going to have it together a couple weeks ago and they rescheduled for this coming sunday and i didn't know if anybody said yes and my other cousin texts back and says we're on i said okay <laughs> so it looks like Universe is aligning. That was perfect. Yeah, there's there's um something there about that that I really love, and it's it's um one of the intentions that I have come to hold is to always meet everyone for the first time. Right? To let go of all those stories as much as I can, as much as I'm aware of, and continue to look for those stories and let them go just it's just an ongoing process an ongoing practice and just always be there to meet them for the first time every single time because i don't know who they are like you know if if i haven't seen someone in 10 minutes who knows what could have happened in those 10 minutes that has shifted their world entirely right like if i meet them as the person as i knew before i'm not giving them the opportunity to become something new well an artist never paints the same thing twice the artist always has a blank canvas so exactly. trust me every moment's a blank slate, but if you don't let go of the baggage, you can't create a new opportunity in front of you. Too many people hold on to the past, allowing what could be new. Absolutely. That that really opens up. I mean, it opens up, a, like you're saying, a canvas. It opens up a blank canvas for beautiful new possibilities. And it's like, and a lot of time, I mean, again, myself included, I include myself in this, is like a lot of time I've focused on outcomes or I focus on, you know, just trying to get something with my, the illusion of control, you know, that I can get, that whatever it may be, whether it's career, whether it's a, you know, a relationship in my life, whether it's a, you know, a, a song I'm working on or whatever, it's like, I will be fixated on a specific particular result 
and it's, and it's like I'll be and I will be attached to it, not even realize it. And I'm like, I will not be happy unless this hap the universe throws this in my face, and this is exactly what happens. And it's like the the burden of the illusion that we have this control and how much opens up when we can just be clear and ex just you know really see the present moment as a blank canvas of anything and everything and really like uh, you know not being attached to an outcome but just being open to possibility and let it in like like Carrie said so beautifully like it's like trusting herself trusting ourselves in that moment and it's like we, like we don't have and so we show up without our filters without a our mask that we we might wear to usually try to pr protect ourselves and like but we also see others the same we don't hold others in the mask that we may have put on them from our vantage point and i think it's like and i mean ultimately that's really what i see that like what we're doing here is like we're allow we're holding a space for us to see and love our neighbor, our, our, whether it's a family member or whether it's someone we've never met before, but it's like holding, it's like, I see the divine expression of the universe in you. And I acknowledge that in you and I hold that space for you. And it's like, and I, and it's like, I see the humanity and I see the possibility in you and I'm going to hold the space for, for you to be that. And I, and, and, and I will love and accept you as that. And I think that's such a powerful place to show up. But also to receive and just and to and to step up into like co connection and collaboration, that's what excites me. It's like when we actually show up from that clearing, you know, without you know, two people with masks on talking to a ma each talking to a mask as opposed to each other. And I think that's just so powerful. So I want to just give an opportunity before we end. If there's any any last words or anything you either anybody would like to share based on this amazing conversation that we've had. I'll say that I appreciate what you're sharing and I appreciate the opportunity to hear Doug's story and the added value, but you know, all of us are talking about it, but nobody's teaching us how to do it. It sounds great and it sounds wonderful, but how does somebody actually know and how to do that deliberately and effectively on a daily basis so they actually, that becomes a new way of living. Mm -hmm. And that's where I would say our strategy is a how to, because like working at the gym, I mean, you gotta start off with two pound weights. But if you're willing and want to get that 10 pounds off at 20 pounds, you're gonna you're gonna need a consistent practice and a consistent plan, and a consistent hold, somebody holding you accountable that's not attached to you that can give you feedback without judgment. Because if we got somebody from our business world or personal world, they're throwing their judgment in there because they're also can be attached to it. So getting somebody that has no judgment to get gain added value because it's really their best interest is for you, and you get to be more honest and real with yourself and what feels right for you. If it aligns with them, great. If it doesn't, trust yourself. You'll have a conversation that, that creates an ideal win-win outcome for everybody involved. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I was just going to add to that, number one, to, uh, to thank both of you for hosting this and for giving us this opportunity to share our story and our gift. And to, to Carrie for absolutely love your passion. And I'm so glad that we were able to connect today for us for me to be able to experience that well, thank you appreciate it appreciate everybody here today for sure appreciate your audience and trust me whoever we can touch any lives we could touch today trust that somebody will hear us and take action to add that added value to their lives so they can be the best they can be no better time like the present <laughs> true <laughs> Absolutely. I, I'd just like to jump on the gratitude plane, train really quick because I, I really enjoyed the conversation. I really appreciate both of you. Um, and just thank you both for being you and for willing to share yourself with the world. Uh, one quick note on what you were saying, Carrie, about the finding someone who listens without judgment. Like, I, I feel like that was one of the greatest gifts I've ever received is just being heard without being judged. And just that experience alone shifted more than anything in my previous 26 years of my life had. Just just mm. being able to speak without fear of being judged. Um, so yeah, thank you for that. And thank you both for being that. You guys are mm -hmm. just awesome. <laughs> yeah.
Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's radical acceptance is such a powerful thing, you know, when we really, when we can be received for who we are, but also for who we're not, you know, that is, just like you said, like that is a, one of the greatest gifts that we can, that we can, that we can share. And, you know, and that's what we, we try to hold in this space. So just thank you so much, Carrie. Thank you, Doug. I really honor and you both. And I'm just so grateful that you were here to share your story and your, just your beautiful insight and wisdom. I would love for you both to come back soon and share with us some more. Uh, and thank you. Thank you so much. And to our audience, thank you for tuning in and for hanging out with us. Again, I just want to invite you to share your story, share your gift. You know, this is a, this is a space for you to share who you are, to share what you have to share with, with us, to share with humanity. You know, there's something that you know, there's something that you've experienced that will rock all of our world because we, I can't learn, I can't grow if I just live in, a, in an echo chamber of my own thoughts. It's experience, it's your experience, it's you're sharing yourself authentically, it's you're sharing yourself vulnerably that allows me to have the courage to face that in myself and to grow. And the same for all of us. And you know, that's, that's what our vision here is at one day. We, our vision is humanity rising in a connected world with each person's unique contributions being valued and magnified uh, through a higher level of collaboration, producing unprecedented new realms of possibility. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you again to Doug and Carrie for being with us. I love you all. We'll see you next Tuesday. Be safe, be well. And as always, one day is today. Take care, everybody.